Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today I'd like to talk about a machine gun that has been in combat service for more than 120 years straight now, introduced in 1902 and still being used today. Now you'd be forgiven for assuming that this is going to be a video about the Maxim gun in Ukraine. It's not. This is a video about the Madsen, or Madsen as it's spelled as opposed to Danishly pronounced. The Madsen gun, a uh, light machine gun, one of the first practical light machine guns introduced in Europe in 1902, uh, purchased by a large number of small countries, but a small number of large countries. There were some of these that got used in World War I by the Russians and the Germans uh, and the Austro-Hungarians, uh, but they didn't see a lot of large-scale service. What they did see was a lot of purchase by smaller countries, and those included Brazil. And these things are still being used today in combat in Brazil. Now, they're not being used by the military per se, they are being used by the military police, primarily in Rio de Janeiro. So let's dig into this. How did this thing survive 120 years and still going strong today? So the deal is, Brazil first started acquiring Madsen light machine guns in the 1930s. They had a batch in 32 and a batch in 35. Both of these were guns in 7mm Mauser. The Madsen gun is, uh, well, particularly easy to change between different calibers. It's kind of like the Maxim gun in that regard, in that the factory would essentially offer it in any caliber you wanted. And it was purchased in at least small numbers in at least half a dozen major cartridges. 7 Mauser, 8 Mauser, 30 out 6, uh, 303 British, 8mm Labelle, uh, 54 rimmed for the Russians, you name it. Um, anything. Well, the Brazilians were buying them in 7mm Mauser, as were a number of the other countries in South America, but Brazil would switch over to 30 6 in the 1940s, and they bought another batch of Madsen guns in 1949. So here we have like a 50-year cycle of the Madsen, not just in military service, but still being produced and acquired new in the early 19, late 40s, early 1950s after World War II. Anyway, these new guns were in uh, 30 6 and that didn't last very long before 7.62 NATO gets adopted in the 1950s, and Brazil decides to convert all of its small arms, its military small arms, to 7.62 NATO. So um, all of the Madsen guns in service were converted to 7.62 NATO. Now, because of the way the magazines work on the Madsen, this is actually a fairly easy process. Let me show you that real quick. So this is a 30 round magazine for a Madsen. It's a double stack magazine, but it narrows to a single feed. And what's unusual about it is that it has no feed lips. It's literally just an open box. And this spring loaded finger is the only thing holding cartridges in the magazine. So that's what it looks like loaded. Now, when you take this mag and you lock it into the gun, it's a nose in with this little tab locking right there and then a rock back style of magazine. And you'll notice when I lock this in, this little tab gets pulled out away from the magazine, and that allows the follower to just push rounds into this feedway. And then once the cartridge is, the top cartridge is just sitting in this feedway, there's still really no need for feed lips, because instead what we have happening is this tab pushes, like so, pushes the cartridge in where it will then feed into the chamber from the inside. Yes. So when they were converting these guns from 7 Mauser to, or 30 out 6, to 308, the change in length of the magazine didn't really matter. You can put a 308 in this relatively long 30 out 6 magazine, and it'll still work just fine, because all it has to do is plop out of the magazine straight down into this feedway. Now, the one problem they apparently had was a, the, the magazine well in the 7mm guns and the magazines in the 7mm guns were shorter than the OT6 guns. So converting either one to 308 was not a problem, but if you tried to use a long OT6 magazine in a short originally 7mm gun, the magazine wouldn't fit, and if you tried to do the opposite, use a short magazine in an original long receiver gun, the magazine would be loose. Uh, apparently there were some guys who would like add you know, big wad of tape on the back of the magazine or something to hold it in place. And with this system, that could actually work. A total clutch, but it could actually work. Apparently, though, um, the military and the police both got this worked out without too much trouble once they realized what the issue was. 
Now let's fast forward a couple more decades to 1996. The Brazilian military is officially getting rid of its Madsen guns. It doesn't destroy them, it gives them to the military police as basically hand-me-down supply aid. And that's the sort of thing that happens everywhere. The difference here is the military police in Brazil, in particular Rio de Janeiro, are essentially a fighting a full-scale war in some areas. We think we have gang violence in the United States. We have nothing like the, the drug cartel fueled gang violence that exists in many places in Central and South America. Uh, Mexico, Colombia, Rio de Janeiro, uh, the police are engaged in combat in a, a very much a militaristic way uh, that we just don't see here in the US. Like people talk about the US police being overly militarized. Uh, the police in these areas need to be more militarized if they're actually going to be become truly effective and victorious over uh, the, the basically the narco forces that they are fighting against. So what the Rio de Janeiro police are primarily equipped with at this point are AR pattern rifles, you know, CAR 15s, M16s, a variety of different AR pattern guns, and FN FALs. Uh, which were another standard military weapon for Brazil. So they've got mostly those. They're substantially, perpetually underfunded. Uh, the guns that they have are all fairly old. Uh, even in 1996 they're kind of old, and today they're really, really getting old. They have decades more uh, service life under their belts. And these are guns that usually have not been able to have the rep the uh, extended maintenance, the preventative maintenance, the repair work that they ought to. And so when you see footage of uh, police troops in the favelas in Brazil, you will often see footage of malfunctions and problems. And into this environment, the army drops a bunch of, at that point, 50-year-old Madsen light machine guns. And these things actually at that time and place provide a remarkably reliable and potent bit of handheld firepower. So the Madsen gun has a bipod on it. It's intended to be a, a light machine gun, you know, fired with a two or three man crew from a bipod. The way the police use them is they ditch, they usually ditch the bipods and it's carried like a shoulder arm. And it is used for suppressive fire, for covering fire, and for pure intimidation. If you read the comments of some of the Brazilian police officers who've used these things, they talk about the really dramatic moral impact that a sustained burst of a 7.62 NATO out of a Madsen light machine gun will have in a gunfight in a favela. Um, I've seen comments from guys who were saying things like, yeah, my squad and I were pinned down and someone like someone showed up with a Madsen and it was the firepower from the Madsen that allowed us to get out of the position we were stuck in and continue the fight and survive in some cases the fight. Um, these are policemen who are going up against drug gangs that are often better armed than they are. And the Madsen was, a, is a weapon of opportunity. Now, if you look at some resources out there, you'll see that the Madsen is, was allegedly pulled out of police service in 2008 when the police are replacing them with the more modern guns that you would really expect. Things like FN Minimis. The reality is for all the intentions of replacing them, the funding has not been there on a wide scale, and these are guns that continue to be in the armory, or I mean originally some of them were museum pieces, but they're accessible and they're available, they're reliable. These are guns that were built to be to be providing heavy sustained fire in a very much an old school military sense. Um, they're very durable guns. Yeah, they're complicated inside, but they were built to a standard to last a very long time. And they probably didn't see much actual firing use in military service, and so they come to the police in surprisingly good shape. So ditch the bipod, wrap a rag around the back end of the, the barrel, just to make sure you don't burn yourself, and uh, voila, you've got a shoulder-fired auto cannon, essentially. And you will see video from the favelas, from the Brazilian police operations, where the ARs go down and have problems, the fouls have malfunctions and go down, and it's the Madsons that typically can contain can continue sustained fire throughout an engagement. Um, whether that sustained fire is interrupted by having to reload magazines because the guys carrying them only have one or two magazines for the thing, that's that's sometimes a thing, but when the gun itself is reliable, 
it's going to get used. When guys go out on patrol and they know that they're going to, or they suspect they're going to get into a, a real hot firefight, it's a gun like that that can provide some real backup firepower for them. And it's unfortunate that they need to be used in this sort of context, but it's fascinating to see a weapon like this that to most of the, the first world Western audience, this is just kind of a, a weird oddball sideshow from the early days of light machine guns because it wasn't adopted widely in any of the major European military powers, or the United States for that matter. But it did get purchased by a whole bunch of countries down in Central and South America. Argentina, Chile, Peru, Brazil. Um, Madsons are really relatively common guns in a military perspective. Um, in South America. And so that's what comes out and gets used. And it's, again, like I said, it's fascinating to see them still in use today. So will the Madsen gun eventually finally be allowed to retire into just museum display service instead of continuing to see combat on a daily basis in Rio? I mean, one would hope so. Um, it's really unfortunate that for all the the bravery and the effort of the police forces down there, the money involved in uh, narcotic smuggling is so endemic and so pervasive and so corrupting that it's hard to have an optimistic viewpoint on them actually winning that fight against drug gangs. Hopefully someday it will happen. Um, until then, my best to uh, any of the Brazilian police forces who are watching. Uh, and one of you guys gave me this really cool hat from the Brigada Militar. So thank you for that. Hopefully everyone else enjoyed the video, a little perspective on an unusual piece that's still seeing use today. Thanks for watching.